Hey guys, Jimmy Vegas here, and in this mini Unity tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create a 3D spinning bonus wheel for your game. This tutorial is sponsored by John John Games. So, if you guys are looking for a channel with plenty of content, gaming, and creativity, John Channel is the place to go. You should probably check out some of his socials too, and stay up to date with all his latest content. Loads of stuff to see. You can find all kinds of games on there, some Grand Theft Auto stuff, even a couple of tutorials that even I haven't covered. If you fancy being sponsored in one of these tutorials, just like John John Games, all you need to do is click that join button below and become a sponsor. Now, on with the tutorial. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click that bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload to my channel on video game development. With that in mind, let's get to work. So I just have a quick simple scene with a couple of assets from different places that I've reviewed in recent months. So the idea of what we're going to create here is a wheel that is three dimensional and will spin to give us, let's say, some extra coins, extra lives, or maybe nothing at all. So obviously this kind of game, uh, rather this kind of mechanic is associated more with games on perhaps a mobile device where you would spin it to perhaps get some extra lives or coins. So I'm uh, hoping that you've come here because you're kind of looking for that thing or maybe just looking for inspiration. So the whole premise of it is actually very simple. We just need to make a script that rotates a wheel and then add a bit of randomization to it. So game object, 3D object, and let's go to cylinder. I'm going to rotate it by 90 degrees and probably a bit more on the X as well, not the X, uh, the Y as well, so we can get it in the right place. And I'm just going to apply this material. Now, this material is just something I've quickly thrown together, which is basically just a, a quick little thing that says, if we zoom in, coins, coins, life, no win, you know, that kind of thing. Obviously, you can create your own wheel. You don't necessarily have to use this one. I've just assumed different sections so we can see which one it is going to land on. Uh, I'm going to increase the size and decrease its width a little bit. Uh, let's see how it looks in our camera. It's not quite centered, so let's get it in the right place so we can actually see it in the game view. Add a little bit lower there. Yeah, that should do the trick. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a bit of a black kind of outline to it. So I'm just going to duplicate that cylinder again, pull it back just a little bit and increase the size just a little as well. And just attach a quick black material to it so we can see a bit of a black outline now. I may bring them down just a little bit more. There we go. So the next thing I want to do is put like a little marker on just to see where it stops and which segment it's going to land on. So I'm going to put it dead center at the top. So cylinder, right click, uh, 3D object cube. Uh, let's probably uncouple that cube a little bit. Shrink its size and reshape it so as it is right for us. And let's bring it outwards. And all this is, like I say, is just going to be a quick little marker. Uh, in fact, 0.5, that can be 0 0.05. So it's going to be somewhere around there. And that should do the trick. In fact, I might just add a li another little section below it, just so as it kind of points in the right direction. Uh, let's have that there. And obviously trim that again. You can take as much time as you really need to with this. This is just me kind of putting together a quick little example of what I want it to look like. Uh, 0.02. So that should fit in quite nicely there. So the majority of this is going to be done via scripting, which is the cool stuff. So there we are. We can see that that's where it's going to land. Probably should put it a bit more center, to be honest, shouldn't we? Rather than where it is. Kind of would make sense. So that is center there. So let's get to the scripting part to make this wheel spin. So right click, create, and let's go to C Sharp Script. And we'll have this as spinner. Now, we're just going to add one quick line of code in void update just to make sure all of this works as intended. Transform dot rotate. And in brackets, we want to rotate on the z-axis. So we need to have 0 for the x, 
zero for the y. Let's just have one for now for the z. And we also need to make it relative to the world around us. So space dot world. Close bracket, semicolon, and save. Let's head back to Unity and just make sure this works as intended. Yep, and I know the wheel itself isn't exactly round. Unity isn't particularly fantastic with its default cylinders. Obviously, you could make something in something like Blender or Maya to make it a bit more round. Uh, so let's attach that spinner script to the cylinder. And let's press play. And we should see it spin. Perfect. I might move the camera over a little bit more, just so as it is a bit more centre than what it would seem. There we go. So, how do we add the randomization to this? Well, it's pretty straightforward, but it just requires a little bit of thinking. So there's three variables that we're going to need here. So public, float, and we're going to have gen speed. And the gen obviously short for generate. This is going to be a randomized number. Next, let's have public, float, and this is going to be the speed we subtract from the speed, i.e. we start with about three, and then we subtract maybe 0.01 every frame, just to gradually slow the wheel down. So sub speed, semicolon. Next, we need a bool to detect if the wheel is already spinning. So public bool is spinning, and by default that will be false. Now I want this to be done via a button. So we'll have a button on our screen that we can press and then the wheel will spin. Hopefully you guys have already got that set up. If not, I have a couple of tutorials on how buttons work. Uh, but simply, we're just going to add that button. I'm not going to change much about it. It's just going to be down there. It's just going to say button. Yours will probably say spin wheel or however you've got your game set up. So we need to start by writing the method for that button. So let's go public void and spin wheel. Oh, close bracket, open curly bracket. So the first thing we're going to want to do is set a speed for our wheel to start spinning at. So gen speed equals random dot range and in brackets the minimum and maximum we'd want it to spin. So let's say the minimum is 2.000 f for float and the maximum is let's say 5.000 f for float close bracket semicolon next thing we're going to need to do is generate a sub speed so the number we take away from that two three four five whatever it's going to be so that's going to be sub speed equals random dot range and in brackets this is going to be considerably lower depending on how quickly you want your wheel to stop. So the higher the numbers you put here, the quicker it will stop. The lower the numbers you put here, the slower it will stop. But I'll demonstrate that a little later on. So for now, let's have this as 0 0.003, let's say, with an F for float. And the maximum, let's have 0 0.009 F for float. Close bracket, semicolon. The next thing we'll do is say is spinning equals um, true, semicolon. I put, uh, should be equals, sorry. So yeah, I uh, for some reason I put the dash there, the subtract, but it's equals. Subspeed equals random dot range. So when we press the button, this will run. That will mean that here we now need to put if, and in brackets, is spinning equals true, then do the following. So open curly bracket and place the closed curly bracket below the transform dot rotate. So we now need to turn that one into gen speed. So that means it will start rotating at whatever number has generated here. Now, as soon as we've done that, we now need to subtract this subspeed number from the gen speed to gradually slow the wheel down. So, gen speed minus equals, and it's going to be sub speed, semicolon, and save. Now, realistically, that is all that's required to get this wheel to spin randomly and slow down randomly. So, if we head back into Unity now, 
And let's set it up so as we can click that button. So on button, let's click plus. Let's drag and drop the cylinder onto there because that's where our script is. Click no function, spinner and spin wheel. I want to save my scene. But I'm also going to click on the cylinder so we can see these numbers down here appear. So if I press play, the wheel shouldn't spin now. It will only spin when we press the button, which it does. And you can see how it's working there. So it's slowing down. And obviously it's now spinning backwards. And it will infinitely spin faster and faster and faster backwards because we've not put anything else in to stop that. That's where we go back to our script. And in update, we now need to say if, and in brackets, we need basically we need to detect if we are zero or negative. And that's going to be gen speed is less than or equal to zero, then do the following. And we're going to say gen speed equals zero, stop it moving, because even if it was just slightly negative, it would still move very slightly. And at the same time, we need to set is spinning as false, semicolon and save. And now this wheel will spin perfectly and it will stop on any of those segments randomly. So I'm going to do this a couple of times just to show how it works. So we spin our wheel, slowing down and we've landed on respin wheel. Let's spin again, see what we get. 50 coins. Spin again. No win. Spin again. And what do we get? 20 coins. So you can see here that the result is completely random each and every time. Sometimes it may not seem quite so random. However, it genuinely is random because we have allowed it to generate its own speed from the start and then generate a random number to take away each and every time to slow that wheel down. And you can see that down here. So this 0.06008103 will change. There we go. So it's different. That wheel spun a little bit longer there. Perfect. And all you would need to do here after that is realistically, you can get this little section to detect which area it's landed in. So that is the basics of how you get a wheel to spin randomly for your game. Guys, I hope that's helped. And if you'd like to know any more, just Leave a comment below and I will see you in the next tutorial. Guys, thank you very much for watching.